want to talk today about Virginia blends. Virginia tobaccos are perhaps uh, my favorite type of tobacco to smoke straight without any casing, without any addition of any other varieties of tobacco leaf. Uh, Virginia tobaccos and Burley tobaccos are the two types mostly grown in the United States. And uh, my grandfather grew bright leaf Virginia tobacco uh, over in O'Ree County, South Carolina, uh, many, many, many years ago. And that's the type of tobacco that's still grown here in the state uh, with, the, with the few farmers that are involved with tobacco farming now. There's not nearly as much of that going on as there used to be. Uh, bright leaf is also grown in Virginia, North Carolina. Uh, some of the largest tobacco farms I've seen in my life are in eastern North Carolina. And uh, for my North Carolina friends, uh, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just an important part of the eastern North Carolina economy, even now. But today, this is not going to be an exhaustive list of Virginia tobacco blends. I want to talk about Virginias, some Virginia Periques, and a couple of blends that have a little dark-fired Kentucky included in them. Uh, but let's just get to it. This is a, a, a list of Virginia-type tobaccos that I particularly enjoy, and I know that for the uh, pipe aficionados out there, none of this will be uh, any news to you. But for those who are just starting out on your pipe journey, and you have been sticking primarily with aromatics, perhaps you have ventured a little bit into Englishes, uh, you need to smoke Virginia blends when you get a chance. There's a natural sweetness that comes with a well-seasoned uh, Virginia blend that you do not get so much with uh, a more full burly blend and some other kinds of tobaccos that are not in the aromatic category. So the first one I want to talk about is uh, one that many, many people enjoy, Escudo Navy Deluxe. I don't know if you can see that on your screen there or not. Escudo Navy Deluxe. When I first started smoking Virginia blends, this was one of two that I started with. Uh, the other was Speakeasy uh, by Cornell and Deal. But Escudo is a coin, and I simply want to read the back of the tin here. A combination of full-bodied Virginia and Perique are the cornerstone in a Scudo. The blend is pressed and matured before it is spun and cut into coins. This process ensures the unique character of a Scudo. Now, if somebody were to ask me if there were a difference between a Scudo and Peterson Navy Deluxe, I don't think there's any difference. Actually, I've heard from very high authorities in the tobacco world that Peterson Navy Deluxe and Escudo are the exact same tobacco. Uh, they're on the machine at the same time. One part of the machine channels the coins to an Escudo tin. Another part of the machine channels other coins to the Peterson tin. But the important thing about a Scudo is that it ages very well. A fresh tin uh, is not going to taste the same as a tin that's four or five years old. Virginia blends on the whole cellar uh, much better than um, some Englishes and most all aromatics. If you want to sell a tobacco, Virginia uh, blends uh, is one you really, really need to try. Another blend that I enjoy is, um, even though the name has nothing to do with my part of the world, Manhattan Afternoon. I watched a video of uh, Jeremy Reeves on YouTube recommending this blend a couple of years ago, so I decided to try it out. Uh, the tin description says, Naturally sweet golden Virginia leaf with a drop of honey sliced into flakes. This has a honey casing on it. And uh, it compares favorably, in my opinion, 
to the Sun Bear tobacco, the limited small batch release that Cornell and Deal came out with a year or two back. Uh, Sun Bear Black Locust, I think, is another one they came out with. But this is not the exact same thing as that, but if you want a Virginia tobacco that has a honey casing that is very reminiscent of Sun Bear from Cornell and Deal, Manhattan Afternoon from Cornell and <laughs> excuse me, Cornell and Deal is in fact a wonderful blend to try, and we carry this at the Pipe Cottage. It's one of a few Virginia blends that I decided to carry when we first started the store. Another one that we carry in the store is Robert McConnell's Matured Virginia Folded Flake Pipe Tobacco. Robert McConnell's Folded Flake Pipe Tobacco. I didn't know a whole lot about this until I visited Boswell's shop in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And um, I did not have the chance to meet Mr. Boswell on that particular trip. But the gentleman who was running the store noticed the types of tins I was picking up from the shelf. And so he strongly recommended that I try McConnell Folded Flake. And I'm glad he did. Here's the tin description. Hand-picked dark Virginia tobaccos and spicy Kentucky, as well as a hint of Perique, are pressed into a flake. If Virginias are married well with Perique from Louisiana and dark-fired Kentucky, the combination is mind-boggling. But it has to be done well. Um, uh, Hall of the Wind and Old Gowrie from... Um, um, Rattray's had a little issue there. I couldn't remember. Rattray's tobacco, uh, Old Gallery and Hall of the Wind, they both have uh, different um, elements in them primarily, uh, Dark Fire Kentucky and Perique, but different measurements of, of each. And so those are two that I really enjoy. And when I can find them, I carry them in the store. But Robert McConnell's Folded Flake is much in the same ballpark as some of those more well-known Rattray's blends. But I enjoy it. I enjoy it immensely. Um, most all of the Robert McConnell blends I find to be attractive. I've not tried them all, but the ones I've had are certainly attractive. Now, a Scudo is what people know about probably more than anything else when it comes to a Virginia coin. But in my personal opinion, I think there's one that tops it, and that's Davidoff Flake Medallion. Now, I, I like many other people, uh, first encountered the name Davidoff in the cigar world. Uh, they are very well known worldwide for their cigar production. Some of the most prestigious world-class cigars on the planet. And so I had reservations about whether or not they knew enough about pipe tobacco in order to pull it off. I was very much mistaken. Uh, I had no right to be questioning their superiority. The first time I tried Davidoff Flake Medallion, I was simply blown away. The sweetness of the coin was superior to that of a Scudo. Uh, it, that's just the way my palate has approached it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure many other people will argue the point against that, but f uh, the bottom line, the, the thing I'm trying to say here is Davidoff Flake Medallion is worthy of your consideration if you are a Virginia smoker and especially if you are in favor of uh, a Scudo. And this, as far as I can tell, has uh, Virginia. It has a little bit of Perique, but it also has Black Cavendish. There's a tinge of Black Cavendish in this, which a Scudo does not have. And it sets it off. It makes it just a little bit more sweet and a little bit more pleasant. Um, and I tend to favor that with the Virginia tobacco. I'm looking for a more natural sweet flavor. And of course, that Black Cavendish is going to bring that sweetness up a little bit. Not, not so much naturally, of course, because Cavendish is uh, a processed leaf. Uh, but it does help. I think it helps bring the Virginia and the Perique up to a more balanced level that highlights a sweetness that I really enjoy in my Virginias. What else do we have here? Now, another one, well, let me just talk about two more that we carry in the store. 
before I talk about some that we do not carry and that are rather difficult to locate. For straight Virginia tobaccos, straight Virginia, nothing added to them. Uh, there's one in particular that I've been aging in my cellar, which I've decided to sell at the Pipe Cottage, and which is the favorite of many um, uh, well-known pipe smokers and, and tobacco people. That's uh, McBaron's HH Pure Virginia. This is, of course, uh, it, a flake, comes in a flake form. But I have been aging some of this for a couple of years now. Now, I enjoy it straight out of the tin. Uh, it's easy to manipulate into more of a uh, ready-rubbed uh, type tobacco so that you can pack your pipe very well with it. It's not that difficult to manipulate into a tobacco that you can, that you can pack comfortably. Uh, but the taste on this is what I would expect from a straight Virginia tobacco. It does have that natural sweetness that comes from the more... Uh, uh, red Virginias uh, that are a little bit higher on the plant during harvest and it's exceptional in its aging quality. I fully expect this tin of tobacco to be very superior and, and quite exceptional in another three to four years. Virginias on the whole are, are going to taste better with some age on them. And perhaps I should do another video about cellaring tobacco and why that matters. But HH Pure Virginia is something you should check out if you're interested in a straight Virginia. Let me just read this tin right quick. A blend composed of both air-dried and flu-cured Virginia tobaccos. HH Pure Virginia is 100% Virginia tobaccos from regions with it with the highest reputation for growing the finest Virginia leaf in the world. Like all tobaccos in the HH family, this blend has no top flavor and only minimal casing used in order to put the natural tobacco taste in front. You will experience the natural sweetness from this Virginia tobacco. And I, I would have to say that the tin description is right on par. Some tin descriptions are not true to the content of the package. I'm not going to talk about particular blends in this video that I find to be troublesome in that regard, but in some instances, the tin description does not match the flavor profile of the tobacco inside. With this, I would say it's right on target. So check out HH Pure Virginia if you have not. One last one that we sell at the Pipe Cottage is Peterson University Flake. Peterson University Flake, uh, this style of tobacco is allowing the experienced smoker to rub out the flake to the texture preferred. The blend is mixed with mahogany, brown, and orange Virginia and sun-cured leaf from India and is slowly pressed for days into cakes of tobacco and then sliced into flake pieces. Strength four, aromatic taste is three, room note is four. This does have a rather pleasant room note. Many people are turned off by the smell of Latakia and they will not necessarily enjoy a... Um, English blend inside of a home or in mixed company. But Virginias, um, especially when they're mixed with some pleasant Cavendish or something like that, tend to have a more tolerable room note. University Flake is easy to smoke. It's something that I would consider an all-day smoke if you are an all-day or everyday Virginia smoker. So it's worth checking out. Now, three that are difficult to come by, but three that are on my list for some of my favorite Virginia tobaccos that I've had in my lifetime. Well, the lifetime of my smoking journey, anyway. Uh, number one on that list is Carolina Red Flake. This is no longer in production. I have some tins put away in the cellar. Uh, but this is an outstanding representation of what a red Virginia leaf can do. It's an outstanding represent representation of the particular part of the world that it came from. I think these came from North Carolina. This is, uh, yes, uh, North Carolina grown red Virginias harvested in 2015. Just like cigars, Different types of pipe tobacco taste different depending on what type of soil it's grown in and what type of the world it comes from. 
Carolina Red Flake is just phenomenal. It has a wonderful natural sweetness, and the tins that I've not opened, I will be aging and enjoying them over time. A good friend of mine gifted me some Christmas cheer from McClellan. I had never had a McClellan, Virginia, until I opened up this tin from 2017. I opened it up last month during the Christmas season, and the sugars had crystallized on the side of the tin. The tobacco's not in here anymore right now, but the smell is still very much present. Mm. And I've often heard people compare McClellan Virginias to ketchup. They smell like ketchup. That's immediately what I smelled when I opened the tin. Ketchup, of course, has vinegar in it. And there, I'm, I don't know if there's vinegar in this or not, but it seems to me that it's possible. Nobody did it like McClellan did. I've oftentimes wished that I came about into the pipe smoking world and in the pipe and tobacco business when McClellan was still around. Because um, just like many others, I would say it's the finest pipe tobacco blending house ever to be produced on American soil. So I'm thankful for my good friend from Virginia who introduced me to that and really, really helped me enjoy this past Christmas season with that tin there. Uh, Esoterica. Uh, there are many esoterica blends that I think are overrated. The hype is simply not worth spending so much money on a tin of this stuff when you can find it. There are a couple, however, that I find to be exceptional. A couple esoterica blends that are worth the hype and worth the time involved in trying to hunt them down. One of them is a Virginia blend, Dorchester. Now, this Dorchester here. Um, let me just, just read this to you. A rich, full, matured Virginia with Louisiana Perique. Um, it's uh, more of a shag cut, I would say, not so much a ribbon. But Dorchester has a pleasant taste and aroma that, that reminds me of my grandmother's house. It reminds me of, of the old house smell that I would, I would experience in the, the, the homes that belong to my grandparents. And it's got a traditional old-fashioned feel to it. I mean, it's quality. From, from the very first bowl, you can tell that it's quality. And it's complex. Uh, I'm not sure where they source their Virginia uh, leaf for this, but it is, it, it, it is complex, and, and so much so that every bowl uh, produces a slightly different experience. You don't always get the same taste with every bowl. Sometimes you have a little bit more of that Perique. Sometimes you have more of that Virginia. And all I can say again is that the sheer complexity of this is, is enough to make you want to go back for it uh, time and time again. But Dorchester from Esoterica, if you can find it, it's a wonderful Virginia blend. Well, I'm going to stop right there. The video is probably too long as it is. I want to thank each and every one of you who have continued to subscribe to this channel. And uh, I have received a massive amount of encouragement uh, from our customer base, from our subscriber base. And we'll continue to make videos as long as you continue to enjoy them. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel. That helps us out. It lets me know that what we're doing matters, that it's not just a waste of time. And uh, if you want to help us out financially, we do not monetize this channel. YouTube does not allow tobacco um, content to be monetized. Uh, so if you want to help us out monetarily, you just go to the Pipe Cottage store and pick up a tin of tobacco. Maybe there's a pipe there on the store that suits your fancy, and that'll help us to continue producing content and moving along with our dream of opening up a brick and mortar store here in South Carolina as soon as we can. I am Alan Harrelson with the Old Carolina Pipe Cottage. Thank you all for stopping by.